Make any suggestions? Well, this is what we were gonna do. Okay. Everybody, if you need masks or anything, we do have extra, and we have a medic team here, uh, just in case. We do have water and Gatorade somewhere around here, right there. Yes. Okay. Those are the announcements. Okay. You're the, you're MCing, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause Whatever. I was gonna let her, but she's not. Yeah, like. But I was gonna let her do it because she's from here. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. You know, she said too many people don't say some things and it's not comfortable. Let me go. I don't think Karina knows that. Okay, who? Karina is her contact. Um, she's on her way, but be here any minute. I'm gonna put on Big L. I'm gonna put on Big L. That's what I'm listening to right now, Big L. Before we get started, if there's any other media that showed up, we do have your press kit if you want it. But I just want to say my name is Luana Gelzer. I'm currently the president of the National Action Network of Central Florida. And also I'm the president of the Coalition of 100 Black Women. But today I'm here as a concerned citizen and as a um, parent who has raised an adult son, but I'm very concerned of what we're seeing in our community. So at this time, we wanna always remember everybody, stay hydrated. If you can um, live stream this, please do so. If you need masks, remember, social distancing is the most utmost importance to us. We want everybody to be safe. But if we're out here doing a pandemic, then we must, you must understand how important this is to us. But I will be remiss if I do not start off without prayer. So 100 black women and the founding pastor of Oasis Fellowship Ministry. Today we are very um, humbled and we're somber about why we're here again in a situation such as this. And the first thing that we want to do is to call on the creator the helper, the one that helps give us understanding, the one that shows us and gives us directions if we can open our eyes and our hearts to hear. Most high God, you are the only living sovereign majesty. We come to you in a place in a time where all we know to do first of all is to bow our knee and ask for your direction, ask for your guidance, ask for your, your intuition, ask for your instructions. We come right now understanding that the whole duty of man is to do justice, to love mercy, 
and to walk humbly with our Creator. It is with this in mind and this in our heart that we call on the one who has put all things together to help us to stand to the occasion and to call for justice. We believe that justice is appropriate. Justice is right. Justice is necessary. Justice is imminent, God. And we come now as conduits saying, how do we walk together in this situation to cause justice to rise up and to flow like a mighty river. God, we come and we lift up Taylor, Bracey. We lift up this entire family. And now we lift up this community that will stand, God, to do justice. That will stand to call for justice. We call for systems that will be systems of justice and equity. We call, God, for leaders that will have, God, the heartbeat of the people in the forefront of their very mind. Lord, we believe that if we can come together and reason, we can come to the table of understanding we can come to the table of justice if we can come to the table of peace then we're able to make situations right that are wrong we believe that there's ability our ability to come together and to righten every wrong that has been imposed to this child to yet again this community God that has uh, has shined a light where there is a need for reform God for police reform Form. God, we believe right now that we, this is the time, we are the people that's able to do exceeding with your help abundantly above even what we can ask or think because you will lead us into all truths. We believe right now that we're able to come across gender, race, socioeconomic status, citizenship, government, policies and policies to right and wrong. So thank you now for bringing us here as concerned citizens most of all that we might be able to raise up a banner of justice and we are not ashamed to say no justice no, no peace. peace no justice no peace no justice no peace in Yeshua's name the name that's above all name we say thank you for it now amen, amen. At this time, I would like to bring forward TJ, a community activist, to say some words. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Dylan Roof, white mass shooters, the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, all were treated better yeah. and with more dignity than Taylor Bracey. See, 2021 has been a year of revelation. What we saw at the U.S. Capitol was a master class on white privilege. But our young black children get an education daily, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom, that we live in two Americas. Two Americas where you were born, where, your pigment, where the pigmentation of your skin is viewed as a weapon. So much so that an unarmed 16-year-old girl was hooked by a white police officer and then swung to the ground and drove with all his force, knocking her unconscious. He didn't render any aid. The first thing he w did was to put handcuffs on her as if she was cattle. So we have to ask ourselves, for people that has been dealing with the pandemic of racism for over 400 plus years. Yes. When is enough enough? When we send our children during a pandemic mm -hmm. to school to get an education, mm -hmm. we didn't expect that their safety would be put in jeopardy by the same people that have sworn to serve and protect. And the reason that they can do this, because in this country, Law enforcement officers are able to harass and brutalize black people with impunity. Mm -hmm. So, yes, Taylor Bracey suffered at the hands of law enforcement. 
but it's not law enforcement and law enforcement officers responsibility solely alone for what the act the actions that he did right. it's those of legislatures yep. it's those of people in congress yep. it's those directly at the white house yep. what are you going to do to protect black people more specifically black children from being murdered for being brutalized with impunity in this country hmm. what we need right now is not poems what we re need right now is not singing along and singing hymns. What we need is for equal protection under the law. And what we need is to make sure that in this country, when you see an unarmed black woman or an unarmed black man or a black child being brutalized, it should resonate with each and every one of us, regardless of your race, regardless of your gender. This is a problem and the solution starts with the people, but we need to start putting more pressure on these legislators who say they are here to represent us, but yet still we don't have the protections. Law enforcement are not above the law. What this officer did was, irres irres uh, was horrible. It was horrible. But how do we tell and look a young black child in the face and tell them that there's justice in this country when all they see on social media is their people being brutalized? So I'm calling on any all legislators on the county, state, local and federal level. It is your job in a public safety duty to make sure that we are protecting our children because if we don't protect our children, we have failed as a society. We deserve equal protection under the law by any means necessary. Thank you. Thank you, TJ. Thank, Thank you very you. much, TJ. At this time, to be respectful, we're gonna um, go ahead and read our um, demands at this particular time. Can you can you see it? And then we can anybody else that want to come and read another one. So I can read the first three. Maybe someone else. And somebody else. Can Don't you in Spanish? Oh uh, yeah, Luana. Get get somebody to read it with him because he knows Spanish and tell him one. Do you need us to do it in Spanish too? Yeah, if tell him one. Okay. Well, he'll read this one. You want somebody to read? I, you come read one and then he'll do it in Spanish. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, hey everyone, David Caicedo, he, him pronouns, co-director of the Florida Student Power Network. My name is Amina Pruitt. I'm with Our Revolution Florida. Um, our demands following the assault at Liberty. Number one, repeal. Oh, do you want to? You can, you can. Oh, yeah. Repeal Florida state law requiring that at least one police officer be present in every school. Hay que sacar la ley que manda que haya aunque sea un policía en cada escuela. Number two, fire the Osceola Sheriff's deputy involved in this assault and guarantee that he will not work as a school research officer elsewhere in the future. Sacar al oficial que asaltó a la persona en la escuela para que nunca más trabaje en una, en una escuela o con algún, yeah. Number three, any investigation into this incident should be led by a community task force, not law enforcement or the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Cualquier investigación que suceda tiene que ser con, el, con la comunidad y no tiene que ser hecha por los policías mismos. Right. Number four, ensure that no suspensions are made and no charges are filed against any other students involved in this incident, including those who recorded and shared video on social media. Asegurarnos que ningún estudiante que esté involucrado en este incidente sea juzgado o que, que reciban algún tratamiento mal o que se pongan en problema por esta por esto los estudiantes involucrados y también los que recorde con la cámara. 
Number five, ensure that impacted students have continued access to education, including but not limited to a, li a right to return to Liberty High School if desired, and that none of the involved students are involuntarily transferred but welcome back to the school. Que los estudiantes que del incidente puedan seguir con su educación y que eso sea en Liberty High School si ellos deciden que eso es lo que quieran. And number six, provide emotional, social, and mental health support and resources to the students involved, including those who witnessed this assault and their families. So, proveer, proveer um, apoyos y recursos emocional, sociales, y de la salud mental para los estudiantes que estuvieron en este incidente y los que también vieron el incidente. And number seven, implement school-wide res, re, school restorative justice at Liberty High School to create a nurturing uh, school climate. Um, hay que implementar en Liberty High School un programa de justicia restaurativa para los estudiantes para tener un ambiente en la escuela más para los estudiantes, mejor. And number eight, require the protection and safety of all black and all oppressed youth who organize to protest against state violence and to protect themselves from all forms of violence. Y número ocho, requerir la protección y la seguridad de los estudiantes negros y todos los estudiantes con identidades marginalizadas para asegurarse que ellos estén aseguros en este tiempo. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. This is Ashton God. You want to read the statistics? <laughs> All right. I'm going to read some uh, 2018 statistics from Florida Department of Education and Florida Department of Juvenile Justice. 30% of students arrested arrests in Florida are for simple fights, no weapons or disorderly conduct. Number two. Black youths are four times as likely to be arrested in schools as their peers, and seven times as likely to be arrested for disorderly conduct. Number three, 70% of girls arrested for disorderly conduct are black. Number four, black students are two times as likely to be suspended or expelled from schools than their peers. A single, uh, a single arrest increases the risk of being arrested again and reduces the likelihood of graduating from high school. In Florida, over 250,000 students attend schools with police officers and armed guards, but no school counselors. In 2018, Florida allocated $180 million to fund school police and security, but only $75 million for school counselors and, and mental health resources. That's a problem. Is there another page? That's it. So, I, um, once again, I hope that's them driving off. By the town tags. I don't know. Is that them now? <laughs> Hey, I just want to say once again, we are waiting for Mr. Crump. Hopefully, he is. So, he just pulled up. He could have just pulled right here. He do not have to park, cause we are here with him for him and the family. But I wanted to say, um, because we know that you have deadlines, that um, we want to go ahead and make some of the announcements. So when he comes, he can just take questions. But we just want everybody to know that there will be a roundtable um, policy to impact and solutions to tomorrow, Sunday um, at 4 p.m. It's online. Then there's an Osceola County School Board meeting um, Tuesday, February 2nd. 
and we're asking everybody to show up at 4 30 it starts at 5 30. if you would like to speak you can speak but we need you to be there at 4 30 and um look for raise your hand okay <laughs> and so i always say this this was a call to action we're gonna ask people not to just go home but to get involved. Those statistics should have been alarming, but we could state some more for Orange County with the lack of civic citations, the disproportionate things that are happening, but the stacks are out there. But what we're saying is, when will that be changed? Our community and our children have suffered long enough, period. And we're tired, we're truly tired that what we saw January 6th with people violating curfew and everything else was allowed to leave. Yes. We saw white privilege yes. at an ultimate high. Yes. And no one stole an election, but when we come to talk about what's going on in our school system, you're not talking about that now young people and what they have to deal with. The school to prison pipeline it's real. It's real. And when they are building prisons, they build it off the population of African American youth, grade three. And quarters. And so private prisons, it's, it's money. It's all about that. So I just want you all to understand this is an ongoing fight. This doesn't stop today, it starts today. No more. 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 The next you'll hear is from Ben Crump, the attorney for the family in Nashley Jackson. They're coming up right now. Thank you, brother. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm attorney Ben Crump, and I, along with attorney Natalie Jackson, have the honor of representing the family of 16-year-old Taylor Bracy who the world now has seen was brutalized by the school resource officer that was supposed to protect her while she was in the custody and care of the Liberty High School here in Osceola County. That ain't right. You're absolutely right. It ain't right on any level. We have present with us her mother and father, Miss Jamisha Bracy and Mr. Marquel Bracy, good parents who never ever thought something like this would happen to their child, what they saw on that video. What parent would think something like this would happen to their child while at school? Each day, parents all over America give their children to our schools and say, help us to educate our children. Help us to nurture our children. Help us to protect our children. No parent takes their child and relinquish custody of them to have what happened on that video by this resource officer who literally picked this young child up and body slammed her, causing her to be knocked unconscious. You know, President John Kennedy said that our children are our most valuable resource. Yes. We should treat them as such. Yes. Did it look like that school resource officer treated this young black girl as a valuable resource? 
Nelson Mandela, president of South Africa, said that history will judge us on how we treat our children. How will history judge how this officer brutalized this beautiful young lady. Can I use this for just one second? On oh, you know. We got something for you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. How, how will history judge the Osceola Sheriff's Department for its employee brutalizing their daughter? Mm -hmm. I have gotten Attorney Jackson over a hundred text messages and phone calls from all around America saying, Attorney Crump, if this was my daughter, now you wouldn't have to worry about what the sheriff was going to do, what the state attorney was going to do, because I would not allow that to happen to my child. It is unacceptable. There seems to be some suggestion that whatever happened, I think that's what the sheriff said, Attorney Jackson, we haven't seen all the video. Mm -hmm. How many times have we heard that in our community? When, you know, Lawanda, it's just, it's, it's mind boggling. You see the law enforcement officer do something egregious outrageous, brutal, uh -huh. and then they tell us, hold on, but we don't have all the video. Mm -hmm. Same or none. I scratch my head, Mr. Jones, to try to understand what could she have done to justify being body slammed and knocked unconscious, mm -hmm. and then to add insult to injury, to have her handcuffed mm -hmm. while she's unconscious. What message is that sending to the, all those other young children out there who are watching this? Young black girl be manhandled in this way by the people who are supposed to protect her. And I, I, I have to say it because, you know, we cannot come and try to defend the honor of this young girl without speaking truth to power. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the fact that you know, you had young white men shoot people in schools and not be treated as brutally as they treated this 16-year-old, 125-pound black girl. You know, Malcolm X said that the most disrespected person in America is the black woman. He said the most neglected person in America is the black woman. He said the most unprotected person in America is the black woman. And that was over 50 years ago. Do we have to create a new quote about black girls? Because if this were in blatant disrespect if this was the opposite of how we protect our young black women, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. Air you know, Mr. Bracey, I understand on top of this to add insult, complete insult to injury. They call your home a detective and say, we want to interview your daughter for the criminal charges that she is facing. Let that sink in. Criminal charges she's facing? No, no. Maybe they have it mistaken. Yeah. They should be investigating him yeah. for the criminal charges he should be facing. Come on now. That's right. I mean, 
why can this be accepted where he can may have the our child uh -huh. and then they say our child is going to be investigated for a crime against him, against him. <laughs> like she assaulted and battered him no did you see the video we saw he assaulted and battered her so I you know it is hard to try to look at these parents and say trust this school system that we have here in our state of Florida to go back and know that your daughter will be safe when the person who was supposed to protect your daughter was the person who harmed your daughter. Yeah. I mean, it's mind boggling. And, and you just know that there's a pattern in practice apparently in America that suggests that you can do this to black children. They don't do this to little white children. No. I mean, we haven't seen any video of a little blonde hair, blue eyed girl being body slammed by the police. Or I got videos from South Carolina where an officer choked the little girl and slammed her. Oh, they snatch her by her hair down here. And, and yeah, Louisiana snatch her by her hair. That's not happening to little white girls, but it's happening to little black girls. And it is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. Is it unacceptable? Taylor Bracey, life matters. Yes. Yes, yes sir. Our yes. children, life matters. Yes. And black lives matter. Yes. Yes. If we don't curtail this right now, it could be far more tragic next time. Because think about it. Who can say when they watched that video and you heard her head hit that concrete floor and that thump? Who can say that they didn't wonder whether that little girl was killed? I mean, her body was limp. She was unconscious, lifeless. And the officer still didn't offer any, and, and this, is, this is very hard, especially on her parents. But we're just trying to make the case why when the sheriff says this isn't a big deal or any suggestion of that now it is a big deal yes, this was yes. real Taylor has real injuries yes. Taylor is going to be affected by this in the future yes. her mother is going to explain to you all about her having blurry vision about her having memory problems about her having headaches about her sleep being disturbed and about her being depressed. It's real, Sheriff. It's real. I just want you to ponder if this was your daughter, Sheriff. How would you feel? What would your demand be? Would you ever let this resource officer work in a school again around children? Because if it's not acceptable for your children, why do you think it's acceptable for, for our children? It's not. It's not. It is that simple. It is that simple. Now, my great uh, co-counsel, who's one of the most able attorneys I've ever worked with, uh, we fought for Trayvon Martin together, and she was the... Uh, a force of nature and making sure that people knew Trayvon Martin life matter is going to talk to you about how this is a pattern. This is a pattern where our young black children are being targeted. 
in some of the most egregious ways ever that is life altering on them. We don't send our children to school to be attacked physically or legally. But that is what's happening to our children. And after you hear from Attorney Jackson, we're going to introduce you all to the parents, uh, the mother and father of 16-year-old Taylor Bracey, because we must stand up for Taylor. 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 We must stand up for our black girls. 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 Thank you. I give you attorney Natalie Jackson to make the case. I will be very quick. You've heard these statistics, but I think it bears us to hear them again. These are statistics in the state of Florida, promulgated by the state of Florida, by the Florida Department of Education and the Florida Department of Juvenile Justice. The first statistic is 38% of students arrested in Florida are arrested for simple fights. This is something that we most, most kids who are going through adolescence, they will get into a fight. That's something that is foreseeable at a school. Black youths, I'm sorry, 38% of black youths are four times as likely to be arrested in school as their peers, and seven times as likely to be arrested for disorderly conduct. So that means that they're arrested for things like, like talking in class, things like having those fights that you normally have, and they're getting criminal, they're getting criminal records from this that have real consequences. Tell it, Matt. So, and I think that so many times when we hear about these arrests, we don't think about the consequences. We don't think about the fact that the parents have to take time from work. We don't think about the time, the stigma that it is on a child who is getting arrested in school when they go back to school. When we think about Taylor's, this is a viral video. This video went viral. Kids put it on the internet, it went viral. Taylor has to go back to school she has to go back to school and face the repercussions of being a viral internet sensation for being abused by the police. I talked to Taylor on Tuesday with her parents and I asked her, do you want to go back to school? She said, I'm embarrassed. She said, I don't know what people are going to say. So this is the on top of all the physical injuries that she has, there's real life consequences and emotional damages. There's an emotional damage to these parents yeah. who had to watch this. I spoke to Ms. Bracey, I said, Ms. Bracey, when did you see the video? She said, I saw the video when I got home. No, the, next, the, next, the next day. Nobody told her. Nobody that. told her about the video. Mm. Taylor didn't remember because she was not unconscious. She doesn't remember what happened. So the school never told her that mm. there was, and they may not have known, so, you know, because it was kids that put it up on the internet. Yes, but the that, resource officer knew. Okay. But that is something that I think is so egregious that you have to view your child in a viral video being slammed to where the head hit the concrete and they're knocked unconscious. So let me go on. 70% of girls arrested in schools for disorderly conduct are black. My lord. Now when you put that in the percentage of black girls in a school and the population in general population, that's an astounding percentage. 70%. Black students are twice as likely to be suspended or expelled from school than their peers. I have to stop here and I have to give, so I have to talk about the principal of this school and thank her because she did call and said that Taylor will not be suspended. And she said, we're putting together a plan for Taylor, a safety plan for Taylor. So, you know, when we're, when we're demanding that people be held accountable, we also have to put out there the people who are doing the right things. So that's what, those are the statistics and that's where we're facing. And I want to turn this over to the parents now so that you can hear from them. Taylor will not be here. 
She has a neurologist appointment next week. She is, doesn't want to be in the media. She never asked for this. That's right, that's right. Thank you, Attorney Jackson. As we bring the parents of Taylor Bracey up, uh, her mother will speak to you first and then her father. Um, you know, when you think about Taylor suffering this concussion, being knocked to the ground, in American society, especially with the Super Bowl coming up next week, everybody talks about the NFL concussion protocol. Yes. When a player is hit hard about the head, then you have to put them through the NFL protocol for a series of days, if not weeks. Sometimes it's career ending. Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. Bracey never thought on Tuesday of last week, of this week, that they would be putting their 16-year-old daughter through an NFL concussion protocol because a grown man slammed her on her head and knocked her unconscious. So there's a reason that we're at the Sheriff's Department here in Osceola County, because we are talking and making a direct appeal to Sheriff Lopez and the powers that be in Osceola County. Would you want to put your child through an NFL concussion protocol because a grown person manhandled and brutalized and knocked her unconscious? We're talking about a little girl. Again, I just keep looking at this picture, not just as a civil rights attorney, but as a father of a young black girl. You're like, my God, did this man have any empathy for his daughter? Well, why not have empathy for our daughters? Because this is what, I mean, you're going to hear from Mr. Bracey. You, I've been hearing from a lot of the mothers, but boy, I've been hearing from the fathers too. And these black men are outraged because it is a father's responsibility to protect their children, especially their little girls, at all costs. You, can you imagine how vulnerable a father feels watching that video? This young lady, we will protect. Yes. We will protect her. And so, Sheriff Lopez, I hope you all take the vow to protect black girls, little girls of color, and not try to marginalize or disenfranchise them and not try to co -op to engage in what Attorney Jackson and I know as the intellectual justification of discrimination. Because I just want you to think for one second, I mean just for one second, if this was a little blind head girl and he slammed her and that was on the video, how long would it have taken for him to be arrested? So the question is how long is this FDLE investigation going to go on before they hold him accountable? Uh -huh. I mean, it shouldn't take that long. We got a video. Right. Okay. What we investigating? When somebody when somebody in our community is caught doing something inappropriate on video, Attorney Jackson, how long does it take them? LaWanda, how long does it take them to arrest them? Immediately. Yeah. They get their due process. We're not saying guilty until proven innocent, but you got a video that gives you probable cause of assault and battery on a child. Yes. On a child. And so I know there are some who don't understand that we love our children just as much as you love your children. And I'm going to have Mr. and Mrs. Bracey, who loves their daughter, come and tell you about her and what happened from their perspective.
and going forward in the future as much as they can. And then Attorney Jackson and us will try to take a few of your questions. So Ms. Jamesia Bracey, who has been just traumatized over this situation, as any mother would be yeah. dealing with the trauma and the brutality that her daughter faced. Yeah. Ms. Bracey, yeah, let's let them know that we with them. Taylor Life Matters. Yeah. Taylor Life Matters. Yeah. Taylor Life Matters. 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 Take your time, Miss Bracey. Mm -hmm. Tell them about your daughter Taylor. Okay. How she's doing. <clears throat> this is hard, hard for me. Yes. Um, I'm sick to my stomach, but I'm doing this for my baby girl. Amen. <clears throat> so, as you all know, you guys seen the video um, going around um, on what happened to my child. On Tuesday, we get a <clears throat> on Tuesday we got a phone call. Well, I did, I did from my daughter, you know, telling me, um, you know, that some girls wanted to jump her out the school. So, you know, I told her, you know, just to inform the dean of what's going on. Um, she informed the dean because the dean did call me to tell me that he'll have my daughter um, waiting for me in student services. So I told him, okay, let him know that, you know, we was an hour out from the school, but you know, I'll be there, I'm on my way. Um, shortly after that, we got another call uh, from the assistant principal to ask, was it okay that an EMT checked my daughter out? So I asked him, I said, well, what happened? What's going on? Why do EMT need to check my daughter out? He never gave me the answer on what happened. He proceeded to give the phone to the lieutenant EMT for him to get on the line to tell me that her vitals were okay and that he didn't see any physical injuries that she needed to go to the hospital. But still, I asked him too, what happened? No answer, no response. Just gave the phone back to the assistant principal. The assistant principal told me and my husband that he'll tell us when we got there. Well, when we got there, I didn't see Taylor immediately because he took us in his office. And he took us in the office and brought the dean in, and the dean trying to, you know, explain on what happened, but still never telling us that our child was actually knocked unconscious. And she woke up inside the office of the principal. So after her being knocked out, she didn't even know she was knocked out. She just woke up in the principal's office. So as we dealing with this now, you know, my daughter is having headaches, blurry vision, you know, she's having trouble remembering things, having a hard time sleeping, you know, it's depressing. She's depressed, I'm depressed. We all are traumatized about what happened. You know, and I just think that, you know, if it was a white girl, would this have happened to the white child? No. No. So it can't happen to our child. That's right. Amen. And we want justice. We want justice to be served. That's right. Yeah. And once again, just like with 12 year old Tamir Rice in Cleveland, Ohio, mm -hmm. it's the adulterification of black children that our children are seen as adults. Mm -hmm. No, no. This was a child. Yes, and anybody who tries to say anything, otherwise is just as culpable as that school resource officer right. near for doing this to Taylor. Right. You can't justify it, y'all. You cannot That's justify right. it. You know, one of the things that uh, my investigator, Cliff Jones and I talked about, we were looking at the uh, things, how an officer is supposed to interact if there is an altercation mm -hmm. with a student, they're supposed to use minimum, the most minimum force necessary. That's right. The most minimum force necessary. Looks like 
he used the most excessive force necessary. I mean, he's a school resource officer. He's supposed to be trained. It's foreseeable that children may get in altercations at school. You're not supposed to knock them unconscious. I mean, you're supposed to be the person who knows how to de-escalate situations. I mean, it's just mind-boggling. The police, I am absolute certain, Miss Francis, they know how yes. to de-escalate situations mm -hmm. when it's other people. Mm -hmm. We saw that on January 6, yeah. 2021. Oh, wow. They can de-escalate. Yeah. It just seems to be with us no. No. in the black and brown communities that they don't de-escalate. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're just saying. Treat our children like you treat your children. That's all we're saying, Sheriff Lopez. If you have children, I want you to think about your daughter. That's why we are here on the Sheriff's Department property saying, Sheriff Lopez, we're trying to force you to think about Taylor Bracey just like you think about your own daughter. That's right. We don't want anything special. That's it. We just want equal justice. That's it. Nothing more. Now you were here, and this is difficult yes, for is. Mr. Bracey. I, I'm the father of a black daughter. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine how he's keeping it together. But if you can, Mr. Bracey, if you could say a few words. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I love you. Um, doing this is hard for me. Um, to pick up, like my wife said, when we got to the school and we took, we went into the uh, resource office. The officer said everything sweet about Taylor, but never showed us a video or how she bumped her head. So we thinking. Well, actually, we thought it was a fight, but it wasn't a fight. Mm -hmm. um, so until we got home the following day, we seen the video, we figured out that's the reason why he was sweet talking us, trying to keep us in the blind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keep you in the blind. So that really made me feel some type of way. And I still feel that type of way right now. I ain't that much of a talker, but um, I just want to see justice on my daughter. soon as possible. Amen. Justice for Taylor. 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 Yeah, and, and before we take questions, I want to say on behalf of Taylor Bracey and her family and our entire legal team, we are so very grateful for all of the activists, for the National Action Network, Chapter President Lawanda, uh, for everybody who didn't think it was robbery to come out here on a Saturday and stand up for this little black girl yeah. because our black girls matter. Yeah, they matter. Okay, and we'll, we'll, we'll take some questions. Yes, sir. Well, I, I think as we have articulated that there are two justice systems in America, one that seems to govern white America and one that seems to govern black America, especially when it relates to policing in America. And after the tragic torture of George Floyd 
in Minneapolis, Minnesota on May 25th, 2020, we were hoping that that was a tipping point, that we would see they would be more professional, that they would be more humane, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that they would be more sensitive yes, yes. when confronting people of color in America. But what we continue to see is that they confront black people and brown people differently than they confront our white brothers and sisters. This implicit bias, this subconscious thought is something that we have to deal with in America. And if we don't, we'll see more George Floyds, we'll see more Breonna Taylors, we'll see more Taylor Bracey's that law enforcement treats us with the most disrespect and inhumanity than they treat anybody else. And you don't have to take Ben Crump's word for it or Natalie Jackson's word for it. Did you hear those statistics? Black girls are arrested 70 times more than anybody else in the school system. When it, you think about little white girls, Martin Luther King said it best that there's some bad in the best of us and some good in the worst of us. We're all just people. And you can't convince me that little black girls are that more nefarious than little white girls. Right. You cannot convince me. And just like you can't convince me, Taylor Bracey did anything to justify this brutality by Deputy Frontenier. You cannot convince me of that. And we are waiting to, for the sheriff or anybody to explain why this is acceptable for this little black girl but you don't treat little white girls like that. I'm sorry, you just have to speak truth to power. Yes, ma'am. Attorney Judge. No, we think that the investigation should be led by a community task force. We've seen over and over again that when the Florida Department of Law gets, in, gets involved, many times there is nothing done, quite frankly. But in a case like this, where we're talking about a school system and we're talking about children in the school system, this is a time for restorative justice. So restorative justice involves inv involves bringing in the community and talking about these issues. Um, restorative justice involves having a plan for the kids to be able to talk about what they saw on that video and what they feel. That's what restorative justice. So I'm not sure if this, once again, this is one of the issues when you have police officers doing multiple jobs. I'm not sure that this is the job of a police officer to talk to the kids and decide what happened in this case. I think it's the job of the community. I think it's the job of the parents. I think it's the job of the students. I think it's the job of the teachers and the principals. Well said, Attorney Jackson. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, we have not. We understand that they are saying FDLE is the only people who are going to comment on it. But what we would hope is that the Osceola County Commissioners who were elected to uh, be effective leaders will chime in and have a meeting with the community and these parents and us to talk about what things happened and what things we should learn from this because if we don't have a real dialogue about this then it would just fester because we won't let them sweep it under the rug right. the crowds will get bigger and people i was on the phone as i told attorney jackson literally uh, communicating with Jamie Foxx and Ava DuVernay and Jay-Z, people who saw this happen hey. to this young black girl and say, Crump, what are we going to do about this? So hopefully the leadership of Osceola County will tell America what we're going to do about My this God. because if they don't, then Come we on. will do something about All this. Right. Yes.
Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am, and then you, sir. Has the school told you all if they're going to ask the sheriff's office not to allow the deputy to return? No, we haven't heard anything. They have not. No, we haven't heard anything about the sheriff's deputy. However, the school has been in contact with Mr. and Mrs. Bracey to set up a plan. And like I said before, they um, indicated that they were not going to suspend Taylor from school. So we were very proud. We were very happy about that. Tell them about the criminal charges. So the criminal charges, um, the day that the day that um, all of this happened, and Mr. and Mrs. Bracey went to the office to get their children. The officer told them that they were going to charge Taylor with battery on a law enforcement officer, resisting without a, with violence. So um, and then. About three days ago, we got a phone call. Ms. Bracey called me because an officer called her house um, doing an investigation and wanting to interview Taylor for his criminal investigation against her. <laughs> so, of course, she called me. I called him, and I said that Taylor will not be speaking to them. I said she has a right to remain silent if you're going to bring criminal charges against her. Um, and that's one of the problems with having a school resource officer in a school. That didn't happen here, but many times what we see is when kids are arrested, they don't have any rights because they have to write a statement to the school principal when they're arrested in school. Maybe that's why we have 70% of black girls being arrested. Yeah, and so they write a statement because the principal requires them to write a statement, but that statement is later used against them in courts of law. So these are things, these are issues, these are very real issues when you have police officers in the school. Now, there might be a time where you need to call a police officer to come to the school. There might be a time where you may need um, security at a school. However, police officers, their job is to take your life and liberty. And do we want to start that at young ages, K through 12? No. Yeah. Where, where their job is to protect and serve, but oftentimes with our community, it becomes a uh, taking of our life or our liberty. Uh, and. and you know, I, I, I just think about the fact that how they try to spin things. They did something abusive and inhumane and I believe illegal, but then they try to accuse the child of doing something illegal. This is America. You know, her family is trying to make a decision, and that would be a family decision. But think about it. You're going to send your daughter back to the school where it has a school resource officer that was supposed to protect her, but body slammed her and knocked her unconscious. As a parent, how confident do you feel sending your child back to that environment? I mean, that's... That culture says something to black, not just these parents, but many black parents. And the children who witnessed it. And especially the children who witnessed it. Who, it reminded me a little bit of George Floyd when you heard them calling out to the police officer who's handcuffing them even though she's knocked unconscious. You remember what those lay people were saying to the police in Minneapolis? What are you doing? This is wrong. This is not fair. You gonna handcuff her? That's what little children are saying to the resource officer. They were being, in my estimation, more uh, adult than the adults. Uh, yes, ma'am. Well, I, I'm going to have uh, Attorney Jackson speak to that, especially in the sense about not having counselors in the school, but giving it to police departments to discipline our children rather than trying to be counseling them on how to be more responsible and constructive. But Attorney Jackson is the expert on these matters. So the Florida um, ACLU did a study in 2018 that they um, promulgated, so I, I would um, ask you all to go to that study. But in that study, what they found was that actually school arrests 
have increased since they, since they brought police officers into the schools. Our demand is that they repeal that state law or require certification for school resource officers to have training, to have, um, to have, to be certified and trained in de-escalation with children, child psychology, um, what were the other things? Um, oh, conflict resolution and those things. I don't know if you guys know, there is no requirement or additional training to be a school resource officer. Yeah, I guess. So these are police officers in our school working with our kids um, that just have their police training. And their police training is to be in high risk environments. And so that's the, that's the status that they're on. So once again, this is a whole argument about reform, police reform, and what we need to do to see a, a better environment for everyone. Yeah, in, in my investigator, Cliff Jones just reminded me, you know, they're talking about investigating her for crimes that she allegedly committed, even though she was body slammed and knocked unconscious. Why aren't we investigating him? We've had people call our office, yes. other families that said they did, this isn't the first time he's used excessive force right. on girls at the high school. Wow. So why don't you investigate that versus investigating yes. this 16 year old girl? Yes, yes sir, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. You know, that's a larger conversation, but we have to have it. Uh, President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris uh -huh. ran on reform, and so we have to hold them accountable. Yes, we yes, have to yes. talk about this uh, school-to-prison pipeline, because that's really what it's about. They're kids, killing our children softly. And, and I know a, a lot of our white brothers and sisters, they say, oh, it don't matter, because it's not happening to their children. And, and that's the problem. As the great Ella Baker, uh, the civil rights icon who started the student nonviolent non coordinating committee with uh, John Lewis said, until white mothers cry just as hard when the police brutalize and kill little black boys as they would if it was their own children, then nothing will change. Yeah. We have to make America look at our children as they look at children. Don't look at black children as some oddity or some animal or something that is foreign. No, our children are children as well. And just like you love your children, we love our children. Yes, ma'am. And this will be the last question. Okay, last question. Yes, ma'am. Responsible for right. mental health. Mm. Come on now. Mm. We have to realize that she's physically assaulted. Uh -huh. right. Right. Yeah, you want the mic? Come on, doctor. Come on, doctor. This is doctor. Right, doctor. This is what I'm going to have to do. Speak truth to power, if you would. Hi, my name is Dr. Agard, and I just want to say that we have to look at what's going on with her mental health. Yes. We have to look at the mental health of this young lady because not only was she slammed down to the ground, uh -huh. she's also experiencing depression. Yes. She also must have some experiences of anxiety right now. Yes. She's having sleep deprivation. Come on. Okay, she's having headaches, she's having loss of memory. This is going to be a serious situation here. And we have to look at her neuro neurology functioning right. as well as her mental health functioning. Yes. In addition to that, those children who witnessed this yes. are right. also suffering. Yeah. Our community is suffering yeah. right. because we are yeah. feeling invalidated as a race, right. as a group of people. We matter. We matter. And so we have to look at the mental health. This community, all communities, we are hurting. We feel invalidated. We have been sick. And we need support here. And so I w I'm asking for the school district, which I'm not saying they're not offering, I do not know, 
but the school system must Say. provide mental health services yes. for this family, yes. 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 mother, yes. this all this this father, all the students that witnessed this. We have to validate what has happened, yes. and we yes. need some answers, and we need changes. And I will stand and advocate for those changes. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And what's your name, Doctor? My name is Doctor Eugenia Agard. Okay, because I know the press wanted to know who you were. Yeah, yeah, press and, press and, press and I have no doubt that oh, wow. she has cognitive functions that have been affected. Yes. How could she not hit the ground with such velocity? I mean, to knock her unconscious. And so we know, uh, you know, I, I've, a lot of the doctors, Dr. Agar, called and said, it looks like she suffered uh, 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 some kind of injury that is going to be significant that impacts her life. And so we're going to have her check to see if she suffered a mild traumatic brain injury, if she uh, suffered memory loss and all these things that are associated with concussions. And so as we, as we close this uh, press conference, I just want you all to seriously consider how would you feel having to put your child through an NFL concussion protocol because a grown man body slammed her and knocked her unconscious. As Nelson Mandela said, history will judge us on how we treat our children. Yes. We are better than this. Yes. Oh Sheriff God. Lopez, we're better than this. Come on now. Osceola County Commissioner, we're better than this. Yes. Liberty High School, we're better than yes. this. America, we are better, better than yes. this. We owe it to our children to be better. Yeah. We can have a more just America, a better America, where all our children get an opportunity at life and liberty yes. and the pursuit of happiness. Yes. Because Taylor Bracey life matters, yes. black lives matter, yes. and black girls' yes. life matters. Yes. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you.